At a certain point in our lives, we learn that puppies are cute. We also learn that kittens are fluffy. These are both examples of what are called categorical propositions. Categorical propositions are about the relationships between classes of things. So when we say that puppies are cute, we're saying something about the relationship between the class or category of puppy and the category of cute things. The class puppies includes all puppies, like these, and these, and this cute little guy. The class cute things includes all cute things, including baby hedgehogs, red pandas, and cute kids, in addition to puppies, of course. Here's our example again. Puppies are cute. The parts of the proposition that refer to the classes of things are called the subject term and the predicate term. Sometimes when we run across categorical propositions, it isn't obvious that we're talking about classes of things. Puppies is a class, but cute is not a class of things. It's a property that things have. But for any property, there's a class of things that have that property. In this case, cute animals. So we'd have to rewrite our proposition as puppies are cute animals to make it clear that we're referring to two classes of things. The subject term and the predicate term are not always single words. In many cases, a whole phrase will function as one or the other. For instance, fire-breathing dragons are creatures to be avoided. In this case, fire-breathing dragons is the subject term and creatures to be avoided is the predicate term. The third part of a categorical proposition is indicated by the words are and is. This element is called the copula, and it links the subject term to the predicate term. In all the examples we've gone over so far, the copula has been affirmative. But the copula can also be negative. Consider this example. Puppies are not reliable guard dogs. In this example, the copula are not is negative. When categorical propositions are affirmative, they're saying that the subject class is included in the predicate class. But when they are negative, they're saying that the subject is excluded from the predicate class. This negative or affirmative characteristic is called the quality. The last element of a categorical proposition is called quantity. The subject of puppies are cute is puppies, and it's obvious that we're talking about all puppies, these puppies, these puppies, this puppy, even this puppy. To make this explicit, we would need to add all to the beginning of the sentence. Sometimes we make statements about only some members of a class. Some puppies are tiny, some dragons are in the Lonely Mountain, or some football players are not millionaires. In ordinary language, we might not say all or some, but it is clear what we mean based on the context. The difference is very important in logic, so we need to make it explicit. If we use S for subject and P for predicate, a proposition of the form all S are P is universal in quantity. While a statement of the form some S are P is particular in quantity. The distinction between universal and particular also applies to negative propositions. So, no NASCAR driver is an NFL quarterback is also a universal proposition. It just happens to be universal negative. And the proposition some baseball players are not all-stars is a particular negative. Now let's review. A categorical proposition has four parts. The subject term, the predicate term, the copula, which can be either affirmative or negative, and one or more words indicating quantity. Together, the quantity and the quality make up the logical form of the proposition. The two statements, all puppies are cute and all kitties are fluffy, have the same logical form because they're both universal affirmative, but the content is different. There are two possible qualities and two possible quantities. We can put them together and we have four standard form categorical propositions. Each of these forms has a label that we will use as a shorthand for the form using the letters A, E, I, and O. So the universal affirmative or all S R P form we will refer to as the A proposition. 
the universal negative or the no s are p form no s is p form we will use the term or the letter e to refer to that kind of proposition and so on <laughs>